Hello, and welcome to the Identity and Access Management Open Source Support Briefing. I'm Cherie Zarawit, the Senior Director of Unicon's Identity and Access Management Program, and we are very eager today to tell you about the open source support activity from Unicon related to the program. So with that said, let's review the agenda for today. First, we're going to start off and talk about IAM events. We're then going to move into more application-related topics. So we'll go into Grouper, Shibboleth, CAS, and Midpoint, which is going to give you an update on some community highlights, as well as talk about some sustaining engineering activities. Then we're going to end with some open source support program updates. All right, let's go ahead and move forward. IAM events. So these are specifics that we wanted to make sure you captured from the communications out in the community. The first thing is the in-common trading that's provided. So we have a link here for you to review those associated details and target dates. But in case you're not aware, in Internet2 leads Shibboleth, Grouper, Midpoint, and Co-Manage training usually twice a year. So the first classes are already confirmed. They start in February and they end in May. Look through another set that usually starts in early fall and grows through the winter so that you have a couple options as far as when to attend those sessions. Um, the next following set of information is all about conferences. So Internet2 is still in meetings to decide about the two conferences that they have and the timing of those conferences. So watch for updates in the community. Um, the Aperio conferences are actually also in planning. Uh, we're targeting June of 2022. Uh, the specific dates are yet to come. All right, let's go ahead and move on to some application updates. All right, so here we wanted to make sure that you were all aware of some upcoming training and conferences that we're aware of. So in common training, if you're not aware, uh, the Internet2 group provides uh, hands-on training for Shibboleth, Grouper, Midpoint, and Co-Manage. These have now been all moved to virtual, so you can take those virtually. They're very public about um, the agendas and all the associated information. So reach out to the site that's listed there. Um, they've got classes scheduled right now, February through May, and they'll have another round of classes that will actually go into the fall and winter. Um, they do usually have some, um, and they will, I should say, Internet2 hosts two meetings yearly. Um, I don't want to comment on any specific dates or details because those are all in the planning stages at this point. Uh, but be on the lookout because those will be happening this year, as they usually do. There's discussion about online uh, versus in person and or a combination. So watch for some announcements to come your way. Uh, yesterday, I actually was part of the Aperio conference planning meetings, and they are looking to come up with a conference in the time frame of June. So we're debating on the dates and looking at everything else that's going on so that we don't have too many overlaps, but watch for announcements there as well. All right, and we're gonna move on to some of the details about our applications. Let's kick us off with Grouper and Jonathan Johnson. JJ? Hey, good afternoon and or morning, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Didn't get a mic check earlier, but hopefully everything's good. I'm also a little disappointed that I wasn't allowed to vote in that poll, but that's neither here nor there. Let's talk a little bit about Grouper. So a couple of things to note up front, all work right now is being focused on Grouper 2.6, which was released this last September, which means that Grouper 2.5 is feature complete. If you are looking for a stable grouper version, that is likely your best bet. Look to use the latest version of 2.5. They, they will be releasing security updates as they come out, but you should be pretty stable as far as the features are concerned there. We go on to the next slide. As I said, work is currently occurring on grouper 2.6. This particular release is focused on the new provisioning framework. Uh, that framework is being written from the ground up to replace what we had out there with the PSPNG previously. Simplifies the configuration that you all would go through. So rather than going out there, for instance, and going into your grouper loader.properties file and adding in, say, an LDAP server, 
and then setting up all the properties for provisioning to that LDAP server. You would go into your administrative interface in Grouper, add an external system for LDAP. It will walk you through setting that up in a GUI. Once you've set up that external system, you can then set up a provisioner for that external system. Uh, again, using a GUI interface that you can then go in and specify, again, through the GUI, which groups you want provisioned out to that LDAP server. So it's actually pretty slick. Some of us have, have seen that since the later versions of 2.5 but they are currently working on ironing out some of the bugs there and making sure that there is feature parity between the new provisioners and the previous generation of provisioners. Along with the new provisioning framework, there are always improved performance activities that are occurring in Grouper. One of the things that we have seen, especially in the early days of the new provisioning framework is that it was not quite as performant, but now the, the developers are out there making sure that it is at least as performant and in some instances, even more highly performant than previous generations. There are of course, container improvements that are coming down if you ever come up with an idea out there of how you might want to configure your container and it makes sense to you, feel free to go out there to the Grouper Slack channel and propose those improvements. One thing that I would like you all to know is that with the development of the new framework out there and the drive towards Grouper 3.0, there are some deprecation warnings. As noted there with the new provisioning framework, all your legacy provisioners are gonna be deprecated and version 3.0 will not be shipped with them. Very similar to what happened with PSP with version 2.4. If you want more information on this, we do have a couple of links there for you. The first is a blog entry from Chris Heiser detailing some of the new work that is going on and where he actually announces the deprecation warnings. And this, the second link there is a link to the general grouper product roadmap to give you an idea of when some of these features might drop. Speaking of some of those new features, Unicon is actively developing through the sustaining engineering program, an external authentication plugin for Grouper that will be delivered out of the box with Grouper 3.0, but is available right now for testing if you're comfortable with using it. It is, it is stable in its latest incarnations. We do have some folks out there using it for OIDC, SAML2, and CAS. And I actually know one of the people on this call is exercising the SAML2 for us, and we're trying to hammer out something there as well. Along with the big external authentication, we do have a few other activities that we're doing under sustaining engineering, particularly small bug fixes when they pop up for you all. We are also going to be engaging in some documentation exercises out there, particularly around the web services. So with that, I think I hand it back over to Cherise. All right, now I'd like to introduce Mike Grady, who's going to talk about Chevrolet. Hello, everyone. Uh, Mike Grady. Uh, I'm going to give you an update on the current status of the SHIB IDP and the SHIB SP and, and some related work to that. Uh, uh, move, do I, can I advance the slides here? No, not ah, there. Uh, so just to, uh, you know, a, a check on where everyone should be in terms of the latest versions of the IDP is now 4.1.4. Uh, but one can also note increasingly in the Shibboleth Wiki that, that there's a variety of properties that have are marked in there as 4.2. Uh, 
And the roadmap shows 4.2 coming out sometime likely in the next few months. Uh, so one should expect in not too long that there'll be a version 4.2 of the IDP available. And the latest version of the SHIB SP at this point is version 3.3, which just came out in the last couple of weeks. Uh, pretty much bug and uh, uh, fixes and a, a, a minor uh, uh, feature that was added to it. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about a change in some of the supported platforms uh, when, when we have a slide later on about the SP. Uh, the other key thing about the SP, though, and one of the things added in 3.3 are more deprecation warnings for to be at risk, meaning that, you know, so there's this major exercise to consider what version SP4 will be. The, the community has spoken, particularly the SHIB consortium partners, that they want there to continue to be a SHIB SP, but the architect Architecture of it needs to change drastically because uh, no one has been willing to step up and say they could maintain the C++ code uh, that the SP is implemented in today, which means that uh, the there are documents out there well, about what the future of the SP is likely to look like and what the architecture might be, and you, you could find out more by following going to those links uh, around the design notes. Uh, for the architecture, but it's almost certainly going to have a Java uh, SHIBD piece that the Apache module or IIS modules would communicate with and start involving some XML config like the IDP does. Uh, we want to move on to the next slide. So in IDP version 4.1.4, um, there are some small additional patches since the uh, first release of 4.1. Uh, 4.2, as I noted, will add a variety of new properties and minor features. Um, during 2022, the roadmap plan for SHIB is improvements and additions for its proxy support, adding intended to add additional uh, protocols that you could proxy to rather than just the, you know, four added the ability to proxy to another SAML uh, IDP. Uh, they're planning to uh, provide support for proxying to an OIDC or maybe, and maybe even CAS uh, server. Um, and continuing to enhance the OIDC and OAuth support that the IDP has built, well, has built into it now if you install the plug-in using a new plug-in model that the IDP supports. And version five is planned in 2023. So one area of, of a lot of work that Unicon is involved in, um, both through uh, funding from internet to and through uh, sustaining engineering on, on behalf of Unicon, uh, is a shibboleth IDP UI, which allows you to manage certain aspects of the IDP through a user interface primarily integrating new SPs into your IDP. And there was a fair amount of work done in 2021 to, uh, to add additional uh, features to the SHIB UI. Uh, it uh, now can um, act as a local federation manager. There are a number of institutions that have a lot of deployments of SAML SPs around the campus, and they need to get the metadata in for the IDP to interact with those locally managed SPs. Um, and the uh, SHIB UI is increasingly becoming a, a, a decently capable federation manager for managing your own set of services that the IDP needs to know about. Uh, you can now, um, well, actually, who wants to go on to the next slide? So the features prior to 2021, you could manage relying party overrides, control attribute release, uh, and you, you can read through the list that's there on the slide. Uh, but there uh, uh, was a lot of work in 2021 to improve the documentation, add some new, a, a new user guide, updated deployment instructions on, on a variety of ways you could de deploy it and integrate it in with your running SHIB IDPs. Um, 
And as I say, a lot of work on the ability to delegate uh, authority to uh, manage SP integrations through the UI to other people at, at the institution. So there's, you can manage and define, uh, this is the basic uh, IDP UI look. Um, and that's been pretty consistent for the last couple of years. Um, but now you can define uh, a variety of different types of roles. Uh, so a role admin is an overall, can do anything in the SHIB UI. Um, a, a user can manage a certain set of SPs, but they need approval from an admin for that SP metadata actually be published out of the UI. And you can define additional roles uh, with, say, say, certain groupings of privileges of the functions that the UI supports that those folks are allowed to do. You can also define groups to be associated with those roles. You want to go on to the next? Uh, so you can also do simple group management so that you can say, this is the set of folks that are allowed to manage the metadata for this SP. Uh, or, you know, that say tie into this particular role that we've assigned. And you can also define your own custom entity attributes. So the, the whole way the UI has worked all along is by embedding entity attributes into SP metadata that drives configuration in the IDP. Uh, and it's supported all of the built in entity attributes that the SHIB IDP has been built to recognize. But now you can also define your own custom entity attributes, and then you can define in your IDP config what that entity attribute in, in SP metadata actually is supposed to mean in terms of whether it's attribute release, some particular thing about how, what the SAML response looks like, et cetera. And entirely up to you to define what that behavior is. So the shibboleth, so and that that whole product is is specifically for the SHIB IDP. Uh, now with the SHIB SP, we mentioned that the latest release is 3.3, the, uh, these deprecation warnings. So something like there's been a discussion in the last few days on the SHIB users list is that one of the things that's probably going to go away is the dynamic endpoint the SP has to publish its metadata, uh, because that depends on a variety of things uh, built into the old code that, that one, they don't think it's worth the work to bring that forward and two would be more difficult to do that. Uh, so one advantage of putting in 3.3 is you can start to see what things might be going away and, and then consider what impact on you that would have. The, uh, I already had the URLs that point to the documents where um, the plans for ID for SP4 are being worked out. And so if you're particularly interested, you'll want to follow those documents. The other thing with 3.3 uh, is the supported platforms have been changing. So now for the first time, um, they're supporting Rocky Linux 8 and Amazon Linux 2 with RPM releases. So if those are platforms you're using, there's now a, a simpler way to install the SP. You don't have to do a, an, a source RPM build or a build from source. There's actually RPMs now, therefore, for those operating systems. Uh, but there are also operating systems that are disappearing in terms of at least being officially supported, where Mac OS and uh, uh, SUSE uh, uh, have been specifically identified to have much more limited support, at least from the core team. That doesn't mean that third parties can't. Uh, focus on building those RPMs, but the core team aren't going to consider those supported platforms in the same way as they have been in the past. And the future of CentOS 8 is also unclear um, because, say, there's not, not just from the SHIB SP perspective, that's particularly because the future of CentOS 8 is unclear, period, at this point, which is, um, you know, a lot of folks now are, are looking into or switching to Rocky Linux 8. And with that, that's pretty much our SHIB update. Oh, sorry, I uh, forgot to uh, highlight our sustaining engineering. I already talked about the fact that uh, some of the SHIB UI work is being 
done under sustaining engineering. We've all SHIB IDP and working on uh, packaging up the various extensions that Unicon has already had for the IDP, many of those being storage related, the Hazelcast plugin, uh, Redis plugin, uh, and packaging those up as official plugins to follow the model that 4.1 supports. Um, and uh, we're close to being ready to, to uh, distribute those as actual official plugins for uh, IDP. Um, and there's also been some work around a, a UI to drive login reporting, uh, you know, analyzing the audit log and doing login reporting. And as always, we're always looking for your ideas about what you'd like, a, like us to, to do in terms of sustaining engineering around the Shibleth IDP and or SP. Next up is Dima Kopolinko, and he's gonna to talk to us about CAS. All right, uh, thank you, Sharice, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, so uh, as usual, let me give you a brief update on the latest uh, CAS server developments uh, for this, uh, this uh, period. Uh, so basically the uh, current uh, general availability version of CAS uh, right now is uh, 643 version. Uh, and as you could see on the slide, uh, the uh, current maintenance schedule for CAS server is as follows, right? So the uh, full end of life for uh, 6.3 uh, series of CAS is scheduled for March 31st of next year, 2022. Uh, the end of life for 6.4 series, which is the current one, is the uh, scheduled for August 31st of 2022. And the currently uh, developed uh, major version of CAS is 6.5.0 uh, uh, GA version. Uh, its target release date is set to be uh, February uh, of uh, next year, of 2022, in a couple of months. Uh, and also, I, I, uh, if we could go, go back uh, one slide, please. Uh, I, I just uh, want to emphasize that it, it should go without saying, in, saying that it, it is highly recommended uh, to stay on the latest uh, support, supported version of CAS, if possible, as uh, end of life versions uh, would not receive any possible security updates from the official uh, CAS development teams, right? Uh, however, uh, as usual, Unicon uh, would do the best effort to support our paying customers who are still running older versions of CAS. Uh, and as for uh, version 6.5.0, which is the uh, uh, next uh, version of CAS, uh, uh, the latest beta release uh, labeled as release candidate four is available uh, right now for test drive uh, to, to catch any potential bugs before uh, the release goes GA. So if you're willing to uh, give it a try, please do so. So next slide, please. Uh, and uh, here I'd like to highlight some of the new features which will be available in uh, version 6.5.0. Uh, first and foremost, uh, CAS is now able to build and run successfully against the latest uh, versions uh, or distributions of JDK 17, uh, which is the current uh, long time support uh, release of Java. Uh, however, uh, the current uh, JDK baseline requirement for 6.5 continues to be set at uh, JDK 11. Uh, so basically this ability to build and run against uh, Java 17 uh, ensures that future versions of CAS will be able to successfully switch to, you know, Java 17 when it becomes the minimum uh, baseline of uh, uh, Java version there. Um, next uh, item, the uh, improvements uh, to delegated authentication facility uh, have been made uh, with uh, additional options, which are now uh, available uh, to be able to select appropriate uh, identity provider dynamically uh, based on predefined strategies, based on uh, user identities, lookups, et cetera. Um, uh, for next item, uh, the, uh, some improvements uh, uh, have been made uh, to the uh, SAML2 assertions uh, signing facility, 
such that uh, now signing of SAML2 assertions uh, in CAS can now honor the uh, one assertion sign flag in the service uh, provider metadata. Uh, and also uh, the, for the uh, last item there on the, uh, on the list, uh, the uh, Webflow interrupt facility uh, has been enhanced uh, such that individual uh, service definitions uh, can now be assigned a dedicated Webflow interrupt policy to manage, the, uh, uh, to manage and handle interrupt notifications on a per service basis, right? Uh, please do note that this is now a recommended strategy for uh, Webflow interrupts and um, other configuration options available for Webflow interrupts are now considered to be deprecated and uh, will be scheduled uh, for removal in uh, future versions of CAS. And uh, yep, next slide, please. Uh, next, uh, there is uh, a new global Groovy-based uh, uh, access strategy available uh, uh, for, for services, which can be configured to be executed for all uh, CAS protected services, not, on, not only for per uh, service-based uh, um, policies. Um, uh, next, uh, the uh, highly popular uh, chain attribute release policy uh, has been improved uh, with an ability uh, for lower order policies in the chain to reuse attributes uh, values uh, synthesized and uh, released by policies in the chain above it, right? So this adds another uh, flexibility to uh, CASA's attribute uh, release uh, uh, toolbox. Uh, and uh, for the next item, there's also uh, now an additional and optional support for uh, bootstrap user interface uh, themes. So uh, the collection of UI themes, uh, which come with CAS uh, now include a special theme name uh, that is based on bootstrap uh, support, uh, should want to choose uh, to use it in, in the, their UI uh, scheming of CAS, in addition to the uh, material design theme that has been available for a while there. And uh, next slide, please. Um, and also, I uh, just want to highlight that uh, some major internal uh, refactoring uh, work uh, has been done in this release uh, uh, to significantly uh, improve performance of uh, SAML2 uh, service locator abstraction uh, during processing of uh, SAML2 transactions. So good improvement there. Um, and last but not least, uh, I just want to highlight that the uh, standard audit log uh, structure of CAS has been enhanced uh, with uh, an addition to capture user agent information using uh, user agent HTTP header where available. Uh, please do note that this is a breaking change uh, if the uh, relational database uh, audit destination is used as uh, audit trail table uh, has a fixed structure. Uh, uh, basically, uh, so in this situation, uh, the audit table would need to be altered uh, uh, and new audit uh, user agent column column would need to be uh, added there. Um, and as usual, this is not an exhaustive list of uh, features available in, in, in version uh, 6.5. Uh, 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 so for more comprehensive list of features, improvements and bug fixes in this release, uh, please uh, feel free to visit the link available there uh, on the slide. And uh, next one. Um, and um, as for sustaining engineering uh, for CAS, uh, the Unicon team uh, has continued mainly focusing on improvements and bug fixes for uh, CAS management app to make sure it's, uh, you know, it's more stable and usable. Uh, and as well as uh, uh, various uh, bug fixes for uh, CAS uh, server itself. And uh, with that, that's all I have for this update. And thank you very much for your attention. All right, next up is Paul Spotty, and he's going to talk about Midpoint. Hello, everyone. Glad you all can make it. 
So for Midpoint, we have exciting news. Um, a long-term release just came out um, just over, right after around Thanksgiving. Um, so it's Midpoint 4.4. And um, it, it currently supplants all the other releases. Um, 4.03 is still around, um, but, but largely everything else for 1, 4, 2 are end of life and 4.3 will be end of life shortly in 2022. Um, I think one or two of them were shortened. So 4.3 may be shortened as well. Um, so just keep that in mind. 4.2, 4.1 and 4.2 had a lot of features for educational, um, the educational market. So um, we strongly recommend you upgrade to 4.4 to capture all those features um, and stay on a lawn supported version. We can look the slide. <clears throat> So this, some of the features of this new release are um, kind of like Grouper and some other open source applications out there. Uh, they've scaled back their approach on uh, multi-tenant database or, or multi-different database of, uh, supported approach. Um, so instead of supporting, you know, Maria, Postgres, uh, Microsoft SQL Server and all of that, uh, they've gone to just supporting Postgres. Um, you are still able to use in is it, they call it the legacy uh, you are still able to use maria and those uh for right now on 4.4 but there's no guarantees that it'll actually run you know performance enough for what you need um and that that choice um while while being bold um has allowed them to make a lot of under the hood improvements in, in as far as performance and scalability um and i'll talk more about the mid-scale um uh, improvements a little bit later. But what that does is just allows uh, the midpoint to support over millions of users, um, which is really important in the higher educational system. Uh, there are UI updates and um, all across the GUI um, and tasks in particular. So for the server tasks, and um, they, they enhance and add to the level of configuration and ability. If you were using 4.3, you saw a sneak peek. Um, but um, I can tell you from using 4.4, there are quite a bit of enhancements there. Next slide. So uh, Jasper reports was was removed. I don't think this really affects anyone, at least that I'm aware of. Um, if you were used writing custom reports uh, based on Jasper, that has gone away. So you'll have to rewrite them um, in into midpoints language. Uh, in, in my experience, though, most people aren't impacted by that because it, they, if they had a custom reports, they mostly wrote them in SQL. Uh, the Axiom query language has more support and is pretty much. Uh, a core feature as it were, it's still experimental. Um, and this is replacing, or this will replace in the future. It's not determined when this will replace some of the query language already used. And this is internal midpoint uh, in the XML um, as far as the query language. There is Java 17 support. Um, so that's a new long-term uh, supported release of Java. And uh, so that's supported out of the box. And then uh, you can uh, de deactivate uh, or activate individual mapping. So there's mappings improvements, uh, which is another big feature. Um, as they've kind of moved again, they've made some bold decisions as far as databases. Uh, they've also made some decisions around deployment archi and architecture. So Windows Server is no longer supported. Uh, you certainly could run it on Windows Server. No one's, nothing's stopping you. It is a Spring Boot type application where you use a Java jar command to run it or a Docker image that does the same. So there's nothing stopping you from running it on Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, but as far as support from Evolvium, they won't really support you on Windows Server anymore. Um, so just take note of that. I don't think it affects a large number of people. Uh, again, Unicon can help you run it on that, um, but there is there's no you know official volume support on that. Um, and then as part of that as well, just deployments to an external web app container. So what does that mean? That means instead of doing the Java jar uh, command, you would take the war and you would deploy it to a Tomcat, Jetty, whatever container that you like, that is also no longer supported. Um, and you, if you use a Perio CAS, you have a, there's ability to take the embedded Tomcat out 
um, and use that in an external container. Well, Midpoint does not have that option any longer. Um, so I'm just pointing that out here in the 4.4 release. I don't think this is going to be proved problematic. Uh, the Spring Boot and the embedded jar approach um, is 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 well done. It, it, it's it's used widely throughout the community. It's well known, and with Docker and Docker images becoming much more popular, container images becoming much more popular. Um, I think that this will this won't be a problem. There's certainly ways that Unicon can help you deploy this, however you you'd like. Um, another note that I, I get a lot of questions about is uh, Midpoint has the new flexible authentication came out around 4.2, 4.1 ish. And what that does is it allows you to authenticate into Midpoint via other means like, like a SAML to OpenID Connect using a, a remote header, things like that. And uh, a big question I get asked is, well, if, if Midpoint has that ability now and, it, and it's, it's much more robust than it previously was, um, is, the, uh, is the internet too, uh, trusted access platform bundle is their image. Are they going to remove their Shibboleth SP and their current, you know, deployment model? And Internet Two has told me directly that they, there are there are no plans to remove the Shibboleth SP. So, um, and right now, to tell you the truth, the Shibboleth SP is more has more features than the flexible authentication. There are certain drawbacks to that approach. Unicon can help you with either. There are Evolvium images out there. Uh, for Docker on Docker Hub. And there's also the Internet 2 tab. So we can help you with either image and you can get what you need there. Uh, so connectors, there's always connector improvements. I like to point them out for people. Um, it seems like the same ones though uh, get touched. So LDAP, Active Directory. Um, so LDAP is your generic LDAP, it's like Open LDAP 389, and then Active Directory is specific to Microsoft. Uh, so those two connectors were updated. Database table connector was also updated. Um, and those are mostly bringing improvements for the mid scale. And that mid scale, again, is supporting a large number of identities in midpoint. Um, and then there's been some. There was over the past year, there's been some work on behalf of, of uh, UW Madison and other clients that Unicon has worked with that noticed performance issues with the existing grouper connector. So this is the midpoint connector to grouper to grab groups and bring them into midpoint for making uh, role based or provisioning decisions. Um, and so right now that connector uses the grouper web services uh, rest based interface. And there were several performance issues noted. Uh, we brought them up to a volume in Internet too, um, and uh, we made some enhancements to that connector. Those connector enhancements are out there in the Internet 2's uh, Grouper connector repo. Um, but over the long term, we realized that the approach of of, of using that REST-based approach probably wouldn't be fully scalable or performant over the broad spectrum of of Grouper deployments out there. You know. Uh, so, Internet Two and 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 and, and Unicon is, has been in discussion about rewriting that grouper connector to utilize a SQL interface, um, and we're also in talks with grouper the grouper folks themselves, Chris Heiser and others, about this. Um, and so it's a blessed approach, and we're just looking at the moment for clients willing to fund and uh, adopt exploring this approach. Uh, so watch out for more from that if you want to fund it or you have opinions or, or uh, any words of encouragement on that effort, just let us know. Thank you, Paul. All right. Now we're going to bring back JJ again. He's going to talk to us about some program updates and how you can really share more of your needs and your desires for us to review across the board. JJ? Okay, thank you, Sharice. We can move on here. Wanted to give you all an update. We, in each of our different sections there, we talked about sustaining engineering. Uh, the sustaining engineering program that we run at Unicon does a lot of things. Mostly what it is used for is supporting our plugins and supporting work that we've done previously for clients and trying to make sure that that work is available to the community. Something that happened earlier this year was that the place where we were storing our plugins went away. And we have been looking at options out there for how 
we might actually make sure that these plugins, that these artifacts are available to you all. I know that even like right before this meeting today, someone that is actually on, on this briefing was asking about the plugin and I realized, yeah, this, this was out there on Ventray. Fortunately, we are close to finding an answer to that. And once that is out there and available, we will let you all know about that. So another part of the sustaining engineering uh, practice at Unicom, particularly for identity, is creating new things out there for you all taking your ideas and realizing them in any of the products that we support. It, it has unfortunately been a, a challenge for us, making sure that we are driving in the correct direction, getting that feedback from our clients. And thanks to Sharice and Dima, and I'm sure also um, Eric Goldman and Steve Erickson, we piloted a new way of gathering that information, particularly for the CAS project. It seemed to be well received. Folks were actively engaged in deciding what work we were gonna do. It did provide us a roadmap for this year, particularly for the CAS sustaining engineering and so we are looking at expanding that to our other, other areas, to our other applications, probably with some tweaks specifically for those applications, just because of the way that each, each of those communities work. But be on the lookout for invitations, more information about providing feedback for our sustaining engineering program. Thanks. Thank you, JJ. All right, now it looks like we've got about eight minutes. We'd like to open for any questions. You can put them via chat or, um, and, and actually then we can read them out um, so that we can share them with the team. I was watching the chat, doesn't look like we have anything yet, but feel free to reach out and we'll restate and then address. So as you're thinking about a few things, I'm just gonna kind of review, especially for the new folks on the call. So when we're completed with our briefing today, um, we will review and then we will post everything out on the Unicon website. So if you have team members that weren't able to join and you'd like to share this information, you'll be able to go to the website, go to the identity space, and you'll see through open source support that we'll have our updated briefing. We're targeting to get that done if we can before the end of the year, if not early next year, you'll have that, um, not the slides as well as the recording so that you'll have options for review. Now, let's see, another piece that I wanted to kind of reiterate is as JJ was talking about feedback, it's really, really important for us to make sure that the sustaining engineering work we are doing is on your behalf and on the priorities, on the needs, on the things that you wanna see happen within those different communities of applications. The way for us to get that is to get your feedback. So one thing we do today and have since the beginning of the program is we look at the trends of the tickets coming in. So you heard throughout the presentation today in all the different areas, when there are issues that come up and we're seeing consistencies um, in where help is needed and resolution is really needs to be driven. Those are some things that we will automatically pick up and use as sustaining engineering tasks so that we can help the community as a whole uh, by focusing on the items that you know, you're seeing um, in your environments as you're working through these applications. But what JJ is talking about is more of a specific process outside of what you're actually um, dealing with today, um, especially enhancements or nuances that you like to see up for discussion perhaps, um, and that may lead to future development. So those are all different options. Uh, we're always open to hear anything you have to say. So please do watch for more information. That will come through your Zendesk tickets in the form of um, you know, info only, I'm only requiring feedback and or response based on your perspective and needs that you have at that time. Hey, Sharice, one thing I'll add actually related to Midpoint is that I know from my involvement in, uh, in common uh, committees that there's a charter that's been approved for a PeopleSoft 
focused uh, work group to, to look at midpoint connectors for PeopleSoft. So anybody who's interested in midpoint and you know uses PeopleSoft may want to keep their eye out for when that working group gets started. You know, sim similar to the fact that there's been now for several years a, a working group focused on banner and midpoint. Great addition, thank you, Mike. Um, that and that brings up about another topic that I wanted to reiterate on as. You've heard each of the specialists walk through these applications. They talked about some community highlights or version updates or deprecation notices. So please know Unicon is not replacing anything that the community communicates out. We just pull in what we feel are some very important highlights, but that is in no way or all means covering everything that the community has out there as far as information for you. So we do encourage you to be active participants in these different uh, working groups or at least watching some of the mail lists for announcements or what have you, so that that way you get all the information that uh, may be important to you specifically. So again, we just try to share those highlights to make sure that you're aware of upcoming conferences or, you know, new versions that are coming up and things that we know based on our history with all of our clients that may be very important. So we want to make sure you didn't miss them. All right, no activity in chat. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reach out to the internal Unicon team. Is there any other updates or words that you'd like to share with our clients before we wrap up today? I, I do have one thing out there, something that did not make the cut for this. There is a feature demo out there floating around for the Shibboleth IDP UI. If you are interested in seeing that and you're on the Internet to Slack. There's a posting for it in the SHIB IDP UI room there. We're also looking for a more public version of that. And once we have that, we will make that available to you all as well. Excellent. Thank you, JJ. All right, I'm going to take a quick look here. It does not look like we have any questions. Well, good, I hope this information was cohesive that it answered any questions you might've had coming into the call. So please look for um, the update on the website as well as future communications about several things, providing us sustaining engineering as well as for next year's first briefing, which should happen in Q2 sometimes. So thank you all for joining. We appreciate your participation and not only attending, but answering the questions as they came about. Have a great holiday.